With the spotlight firmly on Alice Springs today, locals in other remote towns are sharing similar stories of rising crime rates. Joining us live from Carnarvon now is Western Australia's member for North West Central, Merrimie Beard. Merrimie, really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. Thank you. What's the situation where you are? How bad is the crime rate getting in Carnarvon? Um, Ash, I think uh, the, this is not a new issue for Carnarvon. It's not a new issue for the North West uh, or Western Australia for that matter. Or across Australia. So I think it's an issue that we've been dealing with for a long time. Um, our previous member in this seat actually uh, lodged a petition with the government calling on um, the government to do an, a coordinated across um, government agencies review um, as to what we're doing, because clearly what we're doing now is actually not working. Uh, we need significant change and reform. Um, and I think we are seeing similar things to what is happening across Australia. The police are at the pointy end and um, they need help from other agencies. Uh, they, need, they definitely need support. I see the Carnarvon Shire Council president described Carnarvon mid last year as looking like a, a war zone as he was begging the WO Premier for more help in terms of resources. I, I do understand that police numbers have actually doubled there in recent months as a result of those increasing crime levels. Have you noticed that those additional police resources have made much of an impact on the ground? Definitely. The it always does. And this is not the first time we've had additional police um, uh, placed in Carnarvon and in a lot of the towns in the north. And it always has an, an effect because um, it's visual. People can see the police. I think there's also the issue in, um, in places like this where it becomes normalised and whether the stats, the stats are quoted often as being down, but in some instances the question needs to be asked as to whether people are actually um, reporting things as they used to because it, it becomes difficult. I know in Carnarvon, um, the, some of the um, issues I get raised a lot by constituents is that when they call the police, it's diverted through to Perth or Geraldton. Um, Geraldton's 500 kilometres away. It's a call centre um, and, and it's, it's, not as, it's not as instant. So that um, in some ways deters people from calling the police. Um, definitely the victims of crime um, are the ones of the cohort as well that are suffering financially, physically and mentally. And, and I might say as well that it's in certain pockets within Carnarvon. Carnarvon's a beautiful town, let me, let me tell you, um, as are lots of the locations in the north. Um, so what's actually happening is it's, in, it's a minority group that are causing um, a, a, an issue for the majority and they're generally taking up a majority of the resources. So it, there's no accountability, there's, there's seemingly there's no respect and there's actually no consequences. So, so it, it, it's spiralling, I guess that, that's how you would de de describe it. And what sort of crime are we talking about when we talk about increasing crime rates and how much of a problem is, is alcohol as a cause, do you think? Alcohol is, is always a problem. It always has been. Um, but I think a lot of these young kids that are actually um, undertaking these, they're under 18, um, they're breaking windows, they're stealing cars. Uh, they're, they're significant crimes. Um, and obviously there's an impact on the, on the community. And then we have a knock-on effect where people don't want to live in the town. So it's hard to attract workers. Um, it's hard to attract industry, and it's it, and this is an issue across Australia. I understand that, but uh, a lot of it, I think, is it, it's a holistic approach for Carnarvon, for the Gascoigne. We've been calling on the government to uh, reinstate regional executive managers for each of their departments back on the ground. Uh, people in the town are um, highlighting to me that they're going to say a department or an agency to lodge an issue and they're, they're, they're given a number in Perth or Geraldton to phone, which is really difficult. I think unless you're on the ground, um, my call to the Premier before Christmas to come to Carnarvon to actually live and breathe uh, what the locals are is, is very real. I think you, you would understand as everyone does, it's really difficult um, when you're a thousand kilometres away to have any understanding of what it might be like. Um, so in that instance, I think that's where the police at the moment cop the brunt of it. Would you like the Prime Minister to pop in uh, on the way after he's finished up in Alice Springs? I'd love him to. I'd love him to. I'd love him to spend a night. I'd be glad to um, glad to host him in Carnarvon. Just to understand, I think, exactly, um, obviously, this is a holistic thing, which it, it, it's about education. We need strong education. That's the only way out. That's the only way forward. It's the catalyst for change. Housing is an issue for us um, as well. 
Child protection uh, is, is definitely an issue for us. We need um, we need people to actually. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of kids that come from dysfunctional homes, um, and and they need help. They're crying out for help as well. Mary Beard, live there from Carnarvon. Really appreciate you taking the time to give us a bit of an insight into what's happening on the ground in your part of the world. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.